In this episode, Dave Ankovic takes a solo ride to visit Chiang Kong and is later joined by the other riders to explore its larger area, where the guys witness the ethnic culture and the point where the Mekong River snakes into Lao. On a fine June morning, the founder of GT Riders, Dave Unkovic, saddles up solo to explore Chiang Kong suburbs. He's en route 1020 heading to Si Donchai, 14 kilometres south of the main drag, for a little cultural orientation at Tai Lu Lai Kum Museum. The museum tells an interesting story of the Tai Lu people and a display of the group's weaving and fabric. Originally from Sipsong Pana, south of China, you can find the group all over northern Laos and northern Thailand. This place was founded by a young Thai Lu man, proud and passionate of his culture, Surya Wong Chai. Outside, a surprise awaits Dave. Lu women are the most beautiful in the region and regularly win more beauty contests than any other ladies. Despite working hard in the field, all cloth weaving is done from scratch. Yeah, so they're just preparing the, the cotton for, uh, for weaving <coughs> and they're showing us how they, they weave their Lu costumes, their, their pass in, and they all get together and have a little gossip every afternoon, I'm sure. I think the ladies here are, are very happy to get together and, uh, and present their, their culture like this because the kids aren't so interested in it anymore and they're trying to preserve that for, for people to uh, understand and see where they come from. And it's great to see this because in the modern changing world where all the, all the uh, old buildings are going and everything is new uh, concrete shop houses, to see the old loo houses and the traditions of museums here uh, is fantastic. That's all disappearing very fast. Nestled away at the back by the stream lies this quaint shop. A few hundred metres on, it's quite common to find weaving in process. Visitors up for some indigenous fun can have a Tai Lu homestay experience. In the afternoon, Dave heads northeast to Chiang San in search of a bit of history from Thailand's communist infiltration era. This unusual structure, which lies in the secluded village of Hui Guan in Ban Siao district, is a memorial to a communist guerrilla massacre of three government officials, a shameful and cowardly incident in 1970. Here's that memorial we've been looking for for a long time. This is a memorial to the uh, three government officials that were murdered by communists. They'd come to do a, uh, a surrender from the communists. They were led to believe that the communists would hand themselves in and in, uh, in good faith they came unarmed and when they came to uh, greet the communists here, they were all murdered and shot down. Terrible massacre, terrible thing to do. Absolute skullduggery. The memorial was erected by the government years after communist guerrillas were eradicated. The government has provided a description of the incident in great detail, condemning the guerrillas as deceitful and praising the heroic act of the officials. Fully aware of the government propaganda and its ability to twist the truth, we encourage Dave to go into the village where he finds a local resident who lived there during the incident, who can possibly shed some light on the truth. We don't find another version of the story, but we have certainly learned more about the guerrillas. <laughs> เขาไปดูนี่ซุ่มยิงนี่ประมาณสิบสองคนอ่ะสิบสองคนแค่นั้นนะสิบสองคนเขายิงแล้วเขาก็หนีไปอยู่อ่าเนี่ยเดี๋ยวนี้เขาก็อยู่อ่าสองบ้านสองพี่น้องอ่ะที่อ่า
ไปทั้งจากของเนี่ยบ้านอะไรก็ไปตู้ให้สะก็อยู่นั้นก็นี่ไปอยู่นั้นแล้วก็ตอนหลังก็คนยาวก็มาอยู่อพยพไปอยู่งั้นที่ซุ่มหญิงนี้สิบสองคนนี้ไม่มีใครอยู่แถวนี้แล้วใช่ไหมคะโอ้หนีกันหมดแล้วเขายิงแล้วเขาก็มาไล่ยิงเขาก็หนีหนีเขาก็ไม่ไม่ยอมถอยหรอกเขาไปอยู่ที่น้ำช้างอ่ะน้ำช้างแล้วเขาก็ทหารมาก็ไปยิงกับเขากว่าจะไล่เขาออกนี่เจ็บปีตอนหลังนี่ก็มีอาจีนห่อเนี่ยที่อยู่ไม่แอบนี่ Back to Chiang Kong It's Chow time and also time to catch up with a good old friend Jib Whose family closed their guest house business in Bangkok, escaped the city life, and resettled in Chiang Kong, and now runs the only Mexican restaurant in town. Why did you come and stay there the first time? Ah, oh, uh, why don't no. you stay in Bangkok? Life <laughs> is gonna change always, so I must be moved from Bangkok. Must be moved from Bangkok, and then why I came here because. So so nice by nothing by many many tourists many cave many waterfall many in Chiang Kong it different it mm. nothing only one road right mm. and left never get lost and people so very honesty and very polite and very and I never see people fighting because very very because it too small. Okay. And I think that that's good. That's what I like for Chiang Kong now. Is not mm. in the old town. It will not change much. Yes. If anything, is go backwards a little bit, yes. but stay more traditional and more quiet. Yes. And all the family are still here with their own the old house together. Yes. The community is still ev intact. Everybody is still together. Yes. But if you go near the bridge, then you have all the big new concrete shop house and new buildings and coffee shops there. The atmosphere is not the same. Today, Dave is joined by two other riders, Brian and Les, where it's off to Jam Pong Morning Market. Every Wednesday, the temporary border market near Jam Pong Temple hits full swing. From the wee hours, the biggest market in the area sees Laotians crossing the Mekong to trade commodities with the Thai locals, from consumer products to produce from the wild. <laughs> The riders then follow the road along the Mekong to Kang Pa Dai, at which point the river spills into Lao. Uh, this is about 60 kilometers from from Chiang Kong, uh, and there's an amazing road that follows the Mekong River. It, it twists and turns and goes up and down all over the all over the hills. There, it's undulating. A magic road for motorcyclists. One of the favourite ones for guys in North Thailand. And the route number is Route 1155. and get a much needed caffeine hit. Where Ian, another rider, joins the tour. The adventures continue next from Route 1155, the scenic road tainted with battles between government KMT soldiers fighting against the communists who did not want the road built. And of course, the Big Dipper. <laughs> 